everyone, welcome to this screencast. I'm using MATLAB to work with spherical coordinates. Before you watch this screencast, you need to make sure you watch two other screencasts that come before it. One is called Polar Coordinates and Plotting in MATLAB. The other is called Cylindrical Coordinates in MATLAB. Both of these are on my YouTube channel, Robert Talbert PhD, and I'll be referring back to these repeatedly during the screencast since the processes I describe in those two are very similar to the one we're about to see. First of all, let's take a little review of spherical coordinates. Now, spherical coordinates, just like rectangular or what we call a Cartesian coordinates and cylindrical coordinates are just one other way of getting the address of a point that's in 3D space. In Cartesian coordinates, we find that point by moving in straight line segments at right angles to each other. And in cylindrical coordinates, we do it by using an angle and a radius and a z coordinate. Um, in spherical coordinates, we switch it up a little bit and use two angles and a radius. Uh, the radius is called rho, or sometimes just r, and there it is you see in the red on the screen. And it's just the distance from my point to the origin. Of the two angles, one of them is called theta, and it's down here. It's the same theta angle that you used in cylindrical coordinates. It's the angle that would be made with the positive x-axis by my point if it were projected down into the x-y plane. Now the second angle, what makes spherical coordinates what they are, is called phi. And in your calculus textbook, this is the angle that's made with the positive z-axis if I connected my point to the origin with a line segment. So to find a point in spherical coordinates, we have to imagine going up on the z-axis row units, and then decline by an angle of phi, and then swing over by an angle of theta. Now rho, or r, is typically thought of as being non-negative. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi, and phi is between 0 and pi. A phi value of 0 would put you up on the positive z-axis, and if you decline by an angle of 180 degrees, that would take you from the positive z-axis down into the negative z-axis, which we don't see on the screen right here. Anything larger than 180 degrees for phi could be measured by an angle less than 180 degrees if you change up your theta. So we're going to make one change to this set of definitions for MATLAB. In MATLAB, phi is not measured as an angle of declination from the positive z-axis, but rather it's measured as an angle of inclination from the positive xy plane, from the xy plane. That is, MATLAB's way of defining the phi angle assumes that phi equals zero is on the xy plane, not the positive z-axis. Now this is a little annoying, but it's actually the standard way of thinking about this angle among engineers and scientists. So for MATLAB purposes, again, phi equals zero is on the xy plane. Phi equals pi over two would therefore be up on the positive z-axis, an inclination 90 degrees, and phi equals negative pi over two would be down on the negative z-axis. And typically we think of phi lying between those two extremes, so it's on the interval from negative pi over two to pi over two. Now, you will need to make this adjustment mentally whenever you're using MATLAB to plot things from your calculus textbook, since most calculus books use phi going from zero to pi. Also, this totally changes the conversion formulas you see on the screen here in your calculus book. Most of the sine fees will become cosine fees since now the angles are shifted by 90 degrees. Now, the one good piece, uh, piece of good news is that, as we'll see, we don't need to worry too much about the conversion formulas uh, because MATLAB will do all that work for us. And in fact, let's talk about that right now. So MATLAB does contain uh, two functions, just like with polar and with cylindrical coordinates, for converting back and forth between Cartesian coordinates. Uh, the first one is CART2 sphere, C-A-R-T 2 S-P-H, and that of course converts from Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, Z, to spherical coordinates, theta, phi, rho. And the backwards version of that is sphere to CART, which does the exact opposite of that. Each function takes three inputs and produces three outputs, and they both both do exactly pretty much what you expect. One thing to note is the order in which sphere to cart accepts inputs. It has to go theta, then phi, then rho. Similarly, the output of cart to sphere uh, has the same ordering. So now let's think about how we plot surfaces in 3D using spherical coordinates. This is going to be almost the exact same workflow that we saw in these cylindrical coordinate screencasts. So let's take a look at it uh, step by step here. I'm going to start with a function rho in terms of theta and phi, and that could be a constant function, by the way, and we'll see one of those in a moment. Then I have to create a vector that specifies the values of theta that I want to plot using the lens space command or the colon uh, syntax for creating vectors. Then I need to create a vector for phi, my other input variable, the same way. Then I have to create a mesh grid for all those inputs so I can attach a z value to them and plot them point wise. And then I need to create a matrix of row values using my function of theta and phi. 
Then I'm going to use the sphere to cart command to convert all of those theta, phi, and rho values on mass to Cartesian coordinates. Once I've done that, I just have a whole bunch of x, y, z values in Cartesian coordinates, and I can just use the usual surf or mesh or related commands to plot the surface. So now let's look at a very simple example of a spherical surface. The simplest possible spherical surface is just a plain old sphere itself. Now in cylindrical coordinates, that would be a function that is a constant function of rho of radius. So let's look at an example for at the uh, function rho equals 2, which if I let theta and phi range through all their possible uh, domain values, that would create a sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin if all this works here. So first of all, we need to create a vector of values for theta. And uh, theta, let's use lens space to do that. And let's theta go from 0 to 2 times pi. And we'll also let phi take on all of its possible values. And remember in MATLAB, that's from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Alrighty, now I need to create a mesh grid because I'm going to do a 3D plot of this. Oops, messed up. I need to put square bracket theta comma phi equals mesh grid, parenthesis, theta, phi, semicolon. Uh, and now I'm going to define rho. Now rho is a constant function, so it's just rho equals 2. It has nothing to do with theta or phi at all. So rho is actually just a scalar, just a number here, and that's okay. Because I'm going to now take all these theta, phi, and this one single rho value and convert them into a whole bunch of x, y, z values using the sphere to cart command. I'm converting from spherical coordinates to Cartesian, so theta, phi, rho. Definitely want a semicolon. You can see over in the workspace, I now have uh, x, y, z values. So let's plot them. Uh, that would be surface, x, y, z. You can also use mesh. And when I plot this, I see I get my sphere. That's nice. Radius 2. It's a little squatty looking because of the perspective there, but you can pick it up and rotate it and see it really is a sphere. Now we'll look at a 3D surface that's a little more interesting. We're going to let theta go from 0 to 4 pi. Let's go ahead and start entering this. First of all, CLC. We'll clear the screen. We'll let theta go from 0 to 4 pi. A little unusual value for theta, but you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to let phi uh, go from negative pi from 0 to pi over 2. And uh, I'll tell you what rho is in just a minute. Let's go ahead and create the mesh grid. Theta phi equals mesh grid mesh grid theta comma phi. Now I would like rho to equal theta divided by 2. This is really a function of theta and phi, actually just of theta. Okay, got that in there. And now, uh, again, I have defined theta, phi, and rho. I need to convert all those to Cartesian coordinates if I want to plot my surface. So x, y, z equals uh, sphere 2 Cartesian of theta, phi, rho. And now let's see what kind of surface I've got. If I plot surf x, y, z, so you get a kind of an interesting looking little shell shaped region like so, and you can get up underneath it and see the uh, spiraling effect that you have there by letting a rho uh, equal some fraction of theta. So that's kind of cool. What's actually cool too is that since I'm using just the regular surf command, uh, I can use other related commands. Like for example, suppose I wanted to put a, uh, a, a contour plot along with this thing. Well, that's easy enough to do. I just have to go and use, instead of surf, use surf C, X, Y, Z. It's an ordinary uh, command, and uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see right underneath it, I've got the contour lines for this uh, surface, this shell-shaped surface here. So that's all there is to plotting functions and spherical coordinates in MATLAB. Enjoy, and good luck.